and welcome to my virtual demonstration table right here in my personal and beautiful studio. Today, we are going to learn a little bit about the amazing hippopotamus. If you look to the right, you might catch a few of my studio friends, Black Kitty and Mowgli. Looks like I have a little bit of a discipline issue here, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> so the hippopotamus, what do we know about hippopotamuses? Well, they live in Africa and they are a large animal. I found a very cute little video for us to take a look at. So join me in looking at this video and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about the hippopotamus, what we learned and how do you draw a hippopotamus in his natural environment. It's time for some more amazing animals. Number 202, the amazing hippopotamus. The Greeks made up that word, and it means river horse. <laughs> well, they got the river part right, but a horse, please, how common. Found in these parts of Africa, you'll soon see they're nothing like a horse. Yeah, giddy up. Horse? Uh, I'm far more handsome. Exactly. In fact, they're more closely related to whales. Right. What? Hippos spend most of their time in the water. Pass the soap. But at night, sneak out onto land to eat lots of grass. Maybe that's where they get the horse part from. Nay, nay, it's because we gallop fast. Whoa. Okay, then. The hippo's ears, eyes and nostrils are very well placed for floating about in rivers. Um... Yes? Sitting around in that water all day, don't you ever get hippothermia? Really? What an awful joke, you hippo potty mouth! <laughs> and speaking of mouths, hippos can open theirs extremely wide. And their jaws are so powerful, they could crush a watermelon like a grape. Ooh! Hippos are quite aggressive when protecting their territory. <laughs> well, that theory will bite you on the bottom! Ow! Hi. Oh, and they like to mark their territory by... Uh... Wait, no, don't tell them that! Oh, you told them! And you reinforced it with a graphic! Oh, well, that's the truth. I'm no hippocrit. Please stop. They might be big, grumpy-looking sausages, but the hippopotamus seriously is an amazing animal. Well, welcome back. That was fascinating, wasn't it? I didn't know hippopotamus was even Greek, and it meant water horse. And they live in water. So I guess when we draw our hippopotamus, we're gonna have to put them in water. So how do you get started with the hippopotamus? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is show you what your project's going to be. Well, we're back, and I wanted to show you my finished piece of work. So this is what we're gonna try to accomplish. And I'm gonna show you how to draw this using some really basic shapes. And the first thing that you are going to need is some kind of piece of paper. And it could be anything. Uh, it could be, if you have copy paper at home, copy paper. If you have a back of an envelope, back of an envelope. If you have even a brown paper bag, you could open that up and that could become a piece of paper that you can work with. Work with whatever you have that's convenient. A pencil, a marker, any one of these writing tools you can use. I prefer pencil because we can erase pencils. So the first thing I'm going to do once I get started is I am going to sort of make a soft triangle. So we know a triangle is a shape like this. And we're going to make more of a soft triangle like that. And that's going to be the top of the head of our hippo. So I'm going to start off doing a nice soft triangle. Okay, that's my first shape. My second shape is going to be sort of the largest part of his face, which is his mouth. And he can, you know, um, a war, uh, excuse me, a hippopotamus can actually eat an entire watermelon in one bite. So we know that that mouth is quite huge. And this is shaped sort of like a kidney bean in a way. Um, I just make sort of an oval kind of shape like that. And then I'm going to separate it with a line, and that's where his mouth opens up. The next part is, just to add some interest, I'm going to add sort of a, another soft triangle within that other soft triangle. And that just kind of gives it a sense that like his nose is sort of protruding out. 
I'm going to do his eyes, and you can do these any way you want to. So these are his eyes. I'm also going to make them slightly hooded because as we were, as we saw in the video, hippopotamus, hippopotamuses like to sort of submerge themselves deep into the water with just their heads popping out. Next thing I'm going to add is the nostrils. And we know that they can open and close their nostrils when they go underwater. So that's a kind of interesting feature. So I put those little flaps in that close up their nostrils. And then I'm gonna go up and they have tiny ears because they even close up their ears, don't they? Um, so when they go underwater, they're tiny and they can close up their ears. Now the next part of the hippo is his body. And his body is quite round, pretty rotund. So we're gonna start almost not quite at the top of his head. Give yourself a little bit of space there. And I'm just going to do a really big round circle around his whole body. And don't worry if your circle is a little wobbly and not perfect. These are hippos. And they're not perfect. So um, start off with just the circle that you have and leave it at that. Now they have tiny feet. I noticed in the video they weren't very big. They're tiny. They, they, they're not big at all because they don't really walk a lot. So what we're going to do is make four tiny feet. I'm going to do the first ones in the front, and then I'm going to do some in the back. And notice how they overlap. So I just came down right next to the other one. So they're slightly behind. And you can add some of those thick toenails that kind of remind me of an elephant. And there's your hippo. Isn't it amazing? Just with a few simple shapes, you've got a hippo. Now, the fun really starts to begin when you start adding details. Now, I like to put them in the water, so I'm just going to take a line and I'm just going to go all the way across like that. So he's sticking his head over the water. And then I'm going to do another line down here, and that's kind of the ground he's sitting on. So this is sort of the bed of the river that the hippo is living in. And as we know with rivers, there's tons of life within them. So you can... Add some fish friends to your piece. And I just do simple shapes, maybe a little triangle in the back. But you can get very fancy um, with your fish if you like. You can give some eyes to them. I also like a little seaweed. I think that makes it interesting to have some plant life in there that the fish can eat. And where the hippo can hide and play among the seaweed in the riverbed. And some bubbles. He is blowing out air and then goes up to the surface. And then, you know, if you want a sun in the sky, you can put a hot sun or a cool sun. It's up to you what you want to put in your background. And if you want to put like a bird on top of his head, you can or not. Um, I'm going to put a, a bird on his head. Um, it's a nice place to perch on a, on a sunny day in Africa. So there's my little bird. Okay. And I think I'm pretty much done with my drawing. I like what I see. Um, here is the next thing that you can do if you have crayons or any coloring materials color in your HIPAA use what colors you have uh, one of the techniques that I used that you might want to consider is I colored really dark above the water line and then I made it very light underneath the water just show what it looks like if I could see underwater experiment with the pressure of your crayons if you press down hard, you're going to get a darker color if you're more light with it. Try to remember to stay inside your lines. Be neat, be clean, be proud of your work. If you have a chance, please post these. I would love for you to share your finished artwork. Please um, ask your parents or caregivers to help you post these. You can send them to your classroom teacher and they can forward them to me. I look forward to seeing your fantastic artwork. Have fun with the hippos.